Vadim in Toronto, Canada writes, Paul, many DACs advertise 32-bit processing, even though most music is 24 bits or less. Is there a real sonic benefit to 32-bit DACs, or is it mostly about internal headroom and marketing? Ah, those marketing guys. <laughs> well, you know, like anything, it's a little more complicated than that. So, first off, let's talk about what are bits? What does it mean? What does 32 bits mean? Who cares? What's 16 bits? All of that. As a refresher, the bits determine the dynamic range, okay? And the fineness of those steps of dynamic range. So a 32-bit DAC has a dynamic range that's this big, 120, 130 dB of dynamic range, and a 24-bit has this much, and a 16-bit has that much. But to put that into perspective, a 16-bit CD has a dynamic range of almost 100 dB. Huge. A record 60 to 70 dB. And that's big, right? This room right now has the air conditioning, the, uh, the ambient noise level, and I'm here alone, probably 30 dB. If you just took something and measured it, there's 30 dB of noise going on here. So it's all very confusing when you try and talk about dynamic range, and we'll talk more about it over time, but that's what it's all about. So the more bits, the more dynamic range that you can have. We don't use much of that dynamic range, so it's kind of a moot point. Let's go deeper. A 32-bit DAC probably is using much of those extra bits, let's say from 20 to 24 bits up to 32, to manage the volume control because you don't want to lose resolution. So years ago, DACs that had volume controls, digital volume controls inside that were just doing simple math to turn the volume up and down, were doing so at the loss of resolution, right? So as you turn the volume up and down, your resolution was going way lower than, and, and it was audible. You had a sonic loss. Well, over time, as we, as we built DACs with more bits, I think our direct stream DAC went up to 50 bits. Uh, and from there, we could do the math, <clears throat> taking the, the volume up and down without ever dipping below 20 bits or 24 bits, right? So you never had any audible degradation of sound, and, but you were turning the volume up and down. So that's a big deal too. Processing, finer bits, you get better processing. So there's a number of good reasons to have 32 bits. And I don't think it's just a marketing ploy. To say that a 32-bit DAC sounds better than a 24-bit DAC, that's a bit of a stretch, right? It's like saying um, this 300-horsepower car is better than this 220-horsepower car. It may have more horsepower, but it could be a POS in every term that you could think of versus you know this beautiful luxury, but it only has 20, 240 horsepower. So you can't make sweeping statements like that. But in general, yes, you could make a good argument why it's technically good. I wouldn't put a whole lot more to it than that because some DACs, most, most, many DACs that I have personally heard that have spectacular sp specifications don't sound the best. So one of the specs has to be listening. <laughs> when we design a product, I would say 40% of the time we spend on it is done right here in the listening room and we tweak it to our ears, to your ears. So you go to a restaurant, and it's got all the right ingredients, but it tastes not so good. That's the difference, right? A chef can take the same ingredients and make a spectacular meal. Those same ingredients with a hack, not so good. Same stuff, very different results, 
listening. That's what matters. Okay. Sermon over. <laughs> Have a good day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.